So what is the big difference between a tool like Elementor and a tool like Bricks Builder? Well, one of the key things in my opinion is the fact that Bricks Builder listens to what the community wants and develops the tools that they need. So why am I kind of drawing this comparison? Well, we've been asking for a loop builder in Elementor Pro for quite a long time. And what has been hinted at being released we're at 3.6 or coming up to 3.6 and there's still no sign of that actually being released. However, the beta version of 1.37 of Bricks Builder now includes the Loop Builder. And in this video, I want to show you some really basic examples of how to get started and how easy and also how powerful this could be. So if you're interested to find out if Bricks Builder is an option for you moving forward, let's take a look. There's an article that'll give you a full breakdown on how to do pretty much everything I'll cover and probably more, which I will link to in the description below. But I'm just gonna give you a really simple example. So I've already created a typical page inside WordPress. This could be a page, it could be a Bricks template file. You could create your archives, whatever you kind of want. I just wanna give you an example of how the actual tool itself works. So let's go ahead and edit this now with Bricks. And once this loads in, we now have all the usual tools. And you probably at first wouldn't even notice there's anything different included for this loop builder. But let me just show you how easy it is to get access to this. Let's go ahead and create a really simple structure. We're gonna create a listing, which is gonna have an image in 30% on the left-hand side and some information on the right-hand side. Information that's pulled from normal posts, from a custom post type and some custom ACF meta information. So once we've got that in place, we've now basically got things stacked on top of each other. So first of all, let's go ahead and change that. We'll select our first container, and we're gonna use the Flexbox model. Again, something that's been in the Bricks Builder since pretty much just after its initial release. And this is something we still do not have in Elementor, unless you want to use the beta version. So take that for what you will. Okay, so we now have a really simple layout. So the first thing you want to do is drop in some dynamic data. But before we do that, how do we actually tell it this is going to be a loop item as opposed to just a standard container layout? Very simple. Let's go and select our container, our parent container. And now if we come over to the content on the left-hand side, you'll see we've got this new switch in the beta version called Use Query Loop. All we need to do is check that to enable it. And then underneath, we open up our query loop options. So we can expand that. And now we can set up how this query loop is going to work. So we can set this up to be posts, custom post types, taxonomies, terms, all those kinds of things. So first of all, we've got our type. And as you can see, posts, terms, and users. So if you want to create a user archive, you could do that. Terms, posts, you know, you kind of get where I'm coming from. We're going to choose posts to this example. And then we've got the post type option. And you can see I've got a mix of both standard WordPress post types and custom post types in the shape of jobs. And we've also got products because we've got WooCommerce installed. And again, you could use this loop builder with WooCommerce. Pretty cool. So let's just choose jobs, which is our custom post type. We can now go ahead and choose how we want to order these, whether they're going to be by date, by ID, author, those kinds of things. We can then set it to be ascending or descending. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be set up by published date. You can set the post per page. We'll leave that as it is for now. We've got the offset option. So if we want to offset this to have two different designs, three different designs, and we need an offset value, it's built directly into our query loop builder. Then as usual, we can do things like we can include and exclude. We can exclude the current posts. So if you wanted to use this to be related articles, for example, or other articles by this author, whatever you kind of want to use to create your loop and insert it into a template, you could do that inside there as well. So you could exclude this and it wouldn't show the post you're currently looking at. And then we can also include and exclude terms, your typical taxonomies, those kinds of things. And we've also got taxonomy and meta queries underneath. And we get some operators. We can use the and or operator to create more complex and comprehensive uh, query loops. For this example, though, I don't want to worry too much about that. I just want to show you the basics of how to get started. Okay, so now we've basically created our query loop. We've set up the parameters and this container now is going to work based around that query loop. So now we can go ahead and construct things. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this first container. And just for this example, we're going to come into the style. We're going to go into our background. And we're going to use some dynamic information to create the background image using our featured image. So what we're going to do is select dynamic data, scroll to the option that says featured image, pop that inside there. And then we can just go ahead and style this as we want. So we're going to come into our layout option. And we're going to set the height on this to be 300 pixels, for example. And you can see now it immediately pulls in the dynamic information for our featured image. 
Now, if you've ever used Oxygen Builder and you use their ability to create your custom loops and things like that, this is going to feel very, very familiar to you. It operates in a very similar fashion. So if you're moving over to Bricks or you're using this in combination with a tool like Oxygen, you're gonna feel very at home very quickly. So there's our first part. Next thing I'm gonna do is just drop in some dynamic information now into the main container section on the right-hand side. So we're gonna just select our second container to make sure that's the active option come back into our widgets and we're just gonna grab some information. So let's grab a heading and pop that inside there. And there we go, our heading is inside there. Now what we need to do, as we've done before, is select it and come into our content and just change this now to be dynamic information. So where it says, I am a heading, we just get rid of that. We'll select our dynamic options and we'll choose post title. Simple as, couldn't get much easier than that. As you can see, the first one shows you the template layout. So it shows you all the placeholders. So you can see we've got the little placeholder or the meta code or whatever you want to kind of call it. But underneath it shows us the actual real values in a loop sort of scenario. So great way of being able to see how everything is working in two kind of ways. And again, this is where it kind of looks very similar to oxygen. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to come back over. This time we're going to choose some basic text. So we're going to drop that underneath our title. And we're just going to select that from there. We'll just do the same. We'll delete that. We'll choose our little dynamic icon and we're gonna come down and we're gonna just choose post excerpt. And you can see, there's our post excerpt. So let's go ahead now, we've seen how to pull in some basic information, but how do we actually go ahead and create more intricate kind of layout options for dynamic data? Well, this is again, one of those areas that I think a tool like Bricks really excels at. We're gonna come back to our options, we're gonna grab this basic text and we're gonna drop this between our title and our excerpt and we're gonna put in some meta information. So what we're gonna do is just delete that placeholder and we're gonna say posted colon, just use the dynamic data and we're gonna say this was the post date. We're gonna put some separators in there. We're gonna put by and we're gonna put the author information in. So we're gonna click We'll scroll through until we get to the author option and we'll say the author name. And you can see just how easy this is to build up our custom sort of loop layouts. And we're gonna just put in the categories. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna just come down. We're gonna scroll on through until we find the terms and you can see we've got categories, we've got tags, product categories, all those kinds of things. And the nice thing with this is it will automatically pull in the array of these and separate them with commas. So if we're in multiple different categories, it'll pull that in and it'll style everything up the way that we need it to. No messing about with nested loops and those kinds of things. So really, really easy to do. So that's just pulling in some standard data. So let's just say underneath the post excerpt, we wanna do something very similar, but we wanna use ACF metadata this time. Well, let's do the same thing. Let's just go ahead, grab our basic text, pop that underneath there, select it, delete what's inside there, and then we're gonna just come in and just choose things like salary, which is a custom meta field created inside ACF and associated with a custom post type. And we're gonna scroll down until we get to our annual salary. We'll put just before that. And this is one of those things that I really like about working with Bricks is that we don't have to mess about with multiple different widgets just to put one item in. So the salary would be one widget, then we'd have to put another widget in, which would be, you know, the sort of the uh, employer, those kinds of things. It's all done really simply inside this kind of content widget. So we've got salary inside there. We're gonna put employer. Again, we're just gonna be using and referencing ACF meta fields. This time, employer, and finally, we're gonna put the contract term in. And again, we're just gonna use that information, contract term. And we're gonna put months at the end of it. So now we've created our custom loop. No styling, obviously, it looks a little bit rubbish and we can adjust that in a moment. But now let's go ahead and save this. And now we can take a look at what this looks like. So if we use the preview option, that will also show us the placeholder sort of template. And then underneath we'll see all of the relevant information. So like I say, it looks a little bit rubbish at the moment. So I'm gonna quickly just style this out a little bit so you can see how just some simple changes can make the, all the difference. And then I'm gonna show you how we can deal with pagination inside this setup as well.
Okay, so spending just a little bit of time styling things out, you can see it makes a massive difference. So now if we take a preview of this, it already looks considerably better, but very easy in how we can create these custom loops and then use them wherever we want. So now we've seen how this looks. What about pagination, which we know is a key important thing? Well, first of all, let me just come back to my loop. I've only got a couple of items inside here, so I need to just adjust this to only show, for example, two posts. So I'm gonna set that to be two. And once I've done that, now I can come over and I can add in a new container at the end. And this is gonna hold our pagination option. So what I'm gonna do is just research for pagination. And you can see we've got both pagination and product pagination. So if you're creating a loop for WooCommerce, you can use the product pagination option. We're gonna just choose this. We're gonna make sure this indented where I need it. So it's in the container. And now we can open this up. We can style where and how this looks. So we can put this over to the left-hand side, the right-hand side, the center, include icons, all the kind of things that you would want. The key, most important thing is the query. And this tells it what container contains the query loop that you want to affect. So we're gonna just open this up and you see we've got main query, but in this example, we're gonna use container. But before we do, let's just make our lives a little easier. Let's rename the master container that has the loop associated with it to loop container. Just makes life a little easier. So we're gonna name these, and obviously these have to be unique, unique on the page. Okay, so now we've named that container, loop container. All we need to do is make sure that query reflects it. And if you change the name afterwards, once you've selected it, it'll just update. So that's all we need to do. You can see we've got loop container in there. Like I say, it just makes our lives a little easier. We'll select that option from there. Now nothing shows up at the moment, but it is there. And if we save this and we preview it, we should find that that pagination option is available to us. So you can see there's our pagination in place and now we can just step through these as we need to. So at the moment we look at the first page, let's hit two and we'll go to the next page. Really, really simple on how you can use it. Now you're not limited to just working with this. You can create way more complex loops and what I would suggest is taking a look at how the query loop options work like I say, I'll link to the article in the description below. But you can create your query loops like we've just seen and posts and taxonomies and terms and users and all those kinds of things. But you can also set this up to work not just with a normal standard kind of loop like we've just seen, but you can also set up to work with query loops in accordions and sliders. So if you wanna pull in dynamic information, create dynamic layouts, using accordions and sliders, it's built directly into Bricks Builder. So that's how we can use the Query Loop Builder as part of Bricks Builder. Now this is still the beta version, so hopefully this isn't too far away and any bugs will be squashed before it's released. But for me, this is one of those key areas that I've been saying that would help me move away from Elementor when I want to use any kind of page builder. Now, you may be saying to yourself, but Paul, Elementor is way more powerful. It has so many more features. And in some respects, you would be right, but in some areas, it's still massively lacking and reliant upon third-party tools. A loop builder being one of those primary things. It's been hinted that it's coming for a long, long time, but we still haven't seen any sight nor sound of it, not in beta, alpha, or anything else. But you also may be saying, but Paul, even using those third-party tools, we have more advanced features that we don't have, and we have no way of using those inside Bricks Builder. And you would be right in that regard. But I do think that once the query loop, and hopefully not too long before the final part of WooCommerce integration is in Bricks Builder, I think this will be the key area where third-party tools will look a lot more seriously at developing third-party plugins to plug those gaps if, we don't have those features built directly into Bricks Builder in the near future, which hopefully they will be doing once they see how successful the Query Loop Builder actually is. But that's just my opinion. What are your thoughts on this? Would you move away from Elementor once you have these kinds of tools available so you have the native Loop Builder directly inside the builder? Or would you stick with Elementor because it's a tool you're used to and well, you're just happy using it? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.